Welcome to the video lecture series on sociology. Today we'll be discussing third chapter that is understanding social institution from your class 11 textbook introducing sociology. Now in our previous lectures we have discussed many social institutions. Till now we have discussed family as a social institution, economic as a social institution, education as a social institution, religion as a social institution. And in this lecture we'll be discussing politics as a social institution. And just to have a little recap on what social institutions are, the social institutions are a group of persons banded together for common purposes, having rights, privileges, liabilities, goals or objectives distinct and independent from those of individual members. So today our main topic would be understanding social institution and specifically understanding politics as a social institution. Political institutions are concerned with the distribution of power in society. Now when we talk about political institutions, there are two major concepts which we need to understand before we understand politics as an institution. And these concepts are power and authority. Now power is the ability of individuals or groups to carry out their will even when opposed by another. Now when we talk about power and when we talk about this thing that you know it is actually to carry out their will even when opposed by other, it implies that you know when we use power, we use power at the cost of others. And when we talk about uh, society, the power in any society is fixed, which means that some people they wield power and some do not. Now individual does not hold power in isolation, they always hold power in relations with other. And this notion of power is very inclusive. And when we talk about, you know, this power, it actually extends from the household. When the elder member of a family, they give such a responsibility to younger ones. When we talk about power in school, you know, there are principals who enforce discipline in school. When we talk about power in the political parties, there are leaders who regulate, you know, the work of the political parties. And this actually extends to the different areas also. So this is what we have to say that the power is fairly inclusive. And as, uh, when we say that, you know, the principal has a power because he enforces discipline in the school and the political leader has a power like if he wants or if there is a need, he can expel any member of, you know, that particular party. In each case, an individual or group has a power to the extent to which others abide by their will. In this sense, political activities or politics is concerned with power. And now the question arises how power is applied to achieve its aim. And why do people comply to certain commands? Here the concept of authority comes. And uh, authority is like when we talk about authority, it is power ex exercised through authority. And it's a form of power which is accepted as legitimate. And that is why we can say that, you know, the authority and the power which is exercised through authority, it is right and it is just. And it is institutionalized because it is based on legitimacy. And people in general accept power of those who are in authority as they consider their control to be fair and justified. Now, this is the major difference between the power and authority. And to understand the political institutions, it's really very important to understand these concepts of power and authority. Now let's come on to the concept of state. The state exists where there is a political apparatus of government, which includes parliament, congress, civil services officials, which are ruling over a given territory. Now government authority is backed by a legal system and by the capacity to use military force to implement its policy. Now, if you can recall, like whatever concept which we have discussed till now, we actually looked at those concepts from the different sociological perspective. And when we talk about state also, like we look at state from the two major, you know, sociological perspective. And one is the functionalist perspective, which says that state is representing the interest of all sections of society. And when we look at the conflict perspective, I mean, it actually you know, sees a state as representing interest of dominant sections of a society. So this is the major difference between, you know, the theorist, sociologist, theorist who talked about, you know, the state 
from the functionalist perspective and the conflict perspective. Now, let us discuss Weber's power theory and Max Weber actually described political institution and he has actually worked a lot on political institution and politics and he identified power as a foundation of government and when he said power he meant that the power is the ability to achieve ends even in the face of resistance and getting people to comply with the government rule also require authority which is power and but like when we say the authority it is just it is justified and it is legitimate and uh, Weber also labeled three kinds of authority I said that you know there are uh, three uh, ways of you know exercising authority one is traditional authority another is you know the rational legal authority and the third one is the charismatic authority the traditional authority rests on you know the well established cultural patterns like we see in our families you know the elder member of our family you know they actually uh, rule the entire household they uh, you know distribute certain roles and responsibility to the younger people when we talk about the rational legal authority it rests on rules and laws of the society and the charismatic authority uh, depends on the personal magnetism of you know one particular individual or a person we've just discussed about state now let's come on to the modern state and the modern state is defined by its sovereignty citizenship and nationalism now the sovereignty refers to the undisputed political rule of a state over a given territorial area initially in sovereign states citizens did not have the rights for political participation and there was a strong struggle for this and a long struggle for this particular thing which actually limited the power of monarchs and overthrew them and the biggest example of you know such movements are french revolution and the indian freedom struggle and the second point which defines the modern state are the citizenship rights and these rights are civil rights political rights and social rights when we talk about civil rights it means that the freedom to live where we choose to live freedom of speech and religion the right to own property and the right to equal justice before law and the political rights are the right to participate in election and stand for public office and like if we talk about these political rights in most of the countries the government were initially reluctant to admit the principle of universal franchise like not only women there were many countries where the men were also excluded and they were not allowed to cast their vote and the reason was that you know they need to actually own certain amount of property to participate in this particular process so i mean it took a long time for all the countries to actually allow men and women to cast their vote now the social right includes the prerogative of every individual to enjoy a certain minimum standard of economic welfare and security which includes health benefits unemployment allowance setting up of minimum level of wages and you can see like you know the government you know they float number of you know such schemes and that is basically to have the welfare in the society and this broadening of social or welfare rights led to the welfare state now what exactly this welfare state is welfare state is a type of government in which the state provides for and promotes the social and economic well-being of its citizens the government provides some sort of social insurance or benefits for families or individuals in the dire need the welfare state also includes provision for government funding for education health services and housing now well, let's talk about the different types of government which exist you know world over when we talk about the types of government world over i mean the types of governments are mainly of uh, four types one is monarchy the second is democracy third is authoritarian and the fourth is totalitarian Now, monarchy is a political system in which representative from one family controls the government, and power is passed on through that family from generation to generation. But most of the world's monarchies are constitutional monarchies, in which the reigning member of the royal family is the symbolic head of the state, but elected official actually do the governing. Now the democracy as we all know is a political system in which citizens periodically choose officials to run their government. Authoritarian is a political system that does not allow citizen to participate in government. 
and the totalitarian is a political system under which the government maintains tight control over nearly all aspects of life. Now there is a, actually a confusion and there is a debate between you know what exactly uh, is the difference between the authoritarian and the totalitarian and it says that you know in both the cases of you know government and the, both the cases of uh, you know the system uh, there is a brutal tactic uh, which is involved to suppress the opposition from the other side that is from the citizen side but when we talk about the totalitarian type of government it actually you know gets involved in the lives of the people and there is a tight control over nearly all aspects of the citizens life that is the main difference now let's discuss about the conflicts in government we have just discussed the different types of government and whenever there is a government you know there are occasions where there are conflicts in the government and these conflicts are mainly of uh, three different types and uh, these types are revolution war and terrorism now when we talk about revolution the government is overthrown by its citizens often uh, you know in this type of you know conflict in the government a group of charismatic philosophers intellectuals they spark the movement and they actually motivate you know the other citizens to participate in such particular movement and then when we talk about war armed conflict between nations or societies societies have always waged war over rights to land and resources or because of you know certain conflicting moral political or religious objectives and the third one is the terrorism where is a politically motivated attack on civilians by an individual or a group so these are the various you know conflicts which are seen over the years and you know across the world you know as far as the government structure is concerned uh, till now we have discussed you know the various concepts related to state and government now as a student of uh, sociology you can get involved in certain activities as in we talked about the different types of government you can actually you know go through the literature which is available uh, with you uh, on the internet and also like you can read your textbook and try to find out you know what sort of you know the government exists uh, the world over and try to make a list of you know the different countries which can fit into into the different types of government structure another activity which you can get involved in is that just try to find out how these social institutions which we have just discussed with you interact with each other you can start the discussion from yourself as a senior school student and move on to how you are shaped by different social institutions and are you entirely controlled or can you resist and redefine social institution this will be a very interesting activity for you and another activity which you can do is to find out when women got voting rights in different countries and why do you think that despite the right to vote and right to stand for public office women are so inadequately represented and these are the three activities you can get involved in as a student of sociology and you can send your observation and you can you know share your results of your study in the google group which we have created for you to recap today we have discussed politics as a social institution we started off with two very important concepts which are important to understand political institutions and they were power and authority then we moved on to the concept of state we discussed the modern state and then we discussed the types of government and the conflicts in government this is all for now and as a student of sociologist keep learning keep sharing and keep reading books thank you mm -hmm.